you need to know about Arthur is that he absolutely loved peppermints. In fact, everywhere he went, he used to take a large big jar of peppermints so he could eat them all day long. Well, very sadly, in Arthur's final moments of life, he looked at his wife and he said to her, you have been a marvelous wife. But would you do just one last favor for me? Would you take my jar of peppermints and would you put them right at the very top of the attic so that when I die, when I rise up to heaven, I can grab my jar and take it to be with me for all of eternity? Anyway, a few months later, after Arthur had passed away, his wife again was in the attic and she was going through some of his things. And there in front of her, something caught her eye. It was the jar of peppermints. She picked it up, <laughs> blew the dust off it, and then said these words out loud. Oh boy, I knew I should have put them in the basement instead. You see, my dear friends, my fear is this. Some people who watch my videos believe that they are going up, but the reality is they're actually going down to hell. So today, I'm going to share with you three scary signs that a person is probably going to hell. But there is something absolutely crucial you also need to know, and it's this. One of these signs is more deadly than all of them put together. And I want to see if you can guess which of these signs is the most potent out of the three before I reveal the answer. Number one, you're obsessed with the things of this world. I believe the most terrifying word in the whole of the Bible is this one word. Remember. Did you know Jesus told a parable that was actually true? He talked about a rich man and a poor man called Lazarus. This rich man was clothed in the most expensive clothing. He lived in a mansion. He lived in utter luxury every day. But the poor man, Lazarus, begged at his gate. He led down. He was covered in sores. And he longed. He longed for the food that fell from the rich man's table. He just wanted a few crumbs just to try and satisfy this aching hunger he had. But eventually both men died. The rich the rich man went down to hell, but the poor man, Lazarus, went to heaven because he loved the Lord. And in hell, the rich man cried out. Did you know this, that people cry out in hell? People pray in hell, but it's too late. There's no hope. This rich man cried out, Oh, Father Abraham, would you send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in a pool of water and put it on the tip of my tongue because I am in utter torment in the flames of this fire? But Abraham replied these two words, Son, remember, remember. You see, my dear friends, there will be no memory loss in hell. You will remember every time you rejected the preacher. You will remember every time that you chose your own ways over the ways of God. You will remember every time you drove past a church when you knew the gates were open, you knew that the doors were open to come and hear about the saving message of Jesus Christ, but you rejected it. You will remember every time someone tried to put a gospel leaflet in your hand to tell you about salvation through Christ alone, and you will be haunted with this memory for all of eternity. Why didn't I repent? Why didn't I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, it would be super easy for us to rush to a silly conclusion that always the rich people go to hell because they're evil and the poor people always go to heaven. But that simply isn't the case. You see, Abraham, who the rich man was calling out to, Abraham was one of the wealthiest people who ever walked on this earth, and yet he was in paradise. He was in comfort. And I don't want to upset anyone, but there will also be many many, many poor people who will end up in hell. The point is this, it depends where your treasure is. Are you so grounded in this earth that you don't care about the things of God? Because that's what the problem with the rich man was. He ignored that poor man who stood outside his gate and begged and he was too concerned with self and the things of this life. In my country, we have some eco-warriors called Insulate Britain. Do you know what they do? They run in front of the busiest roads in the UK and they pull out their banners and they glue themselves to the road Road to cause a big build-up of traffic and thus draw lots of attention to their campaign. Now, why is this so frustrating? Because when the police come and they try to budge them, they can't move these people because their hands and their feet are glued to the road. And my dear friend, I believe there are many people who profess to be Christians, but their hands are glued to the things of this earth. So suppose the Lord Jesus Christ was to come right now and he was to call all of his saints to meet him in the sky and they would rise up. Many of these 
same people would have their hands glued to their laptops and all the filth on there. They would have their hands glued to their cars, to their career, to their social media platforms, to their houses. They would not want to rise up with the Lord Jesus Christ. They would not move because like the Apostle Paul said about Demas, they have fallen in love with the things of this present age. Are you ready when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and he says, rise, come with me to heaven and let's build a new kingdom? Or are you quite content with the devil's kingdom and the things of this world? So over to you. Do you think number one is the most concerning sign that you're probably going to hell? Well, we're going to find out very shortly. Number two, you think that you are a good person. I hope this doesn't happen to you, but suppose tonight is your last night on planet earth and you stand before the creator of this universe and he says to you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would your answer be? Would you say, because I'm a good person? Would you say, because I'm a church goer? Would you say, because I've done religious things? If any of those things were your answer, I don't want to upset anyone, but I've got to tell you this. I truly do believe that the Lord would turn around to you and say these words, depart from me. I never knew you. For anyone who thinks that they're a good person, did you know the Lord Jesus Christ said these very words? No one is good except God alone. We've told lies and the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. We've been proud at times and it says in the Bible that God resists the proud. Every single one of us has committed adultery in our hearts. We've looked with wrong desires at someone who is not our husband or our wife and the Bible says that no adulterer, no fornicator will have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. But here's the amazing news. There is a wideness to God's mercy. Even though we are criminals in the sight of God. God does allow criminals into his heaven, but they have to be cleaned up criminals. How does it work? Well, because the God of the universe loved the people that he created, he cared for them. He looks at them and says, I've made you. I love you. I want you to be in heaven with me. This same God prepared a sacrifice. He gave up his precious son, his only son, the very jewel of heaven, and he gave him as a gift to this broken, sinful world. And did you know this? One of the most incredible, mind-boggling things is the God of this universe, Christ Jesus Spirit, stepped into a human body and he lived amongst us. He wasn't born in a palace in Rome. He was born in a little animal trough in a little meager town called Bethlehem. He didn't hang around with celebrities, but rather tax collectors and fishermen. He didn't have a, a glamorous job in the Houses of Parliament. No, the Lord Jesus Christ, he worked with stone and wood. He lived a very humble life and didn't seek after the elaborate things. And everywhere this man went, he left light. He healed the sick. He fed the poor. He had compassion on the lost. And it said about him that the common people heard him gladly. And this wonderful person, God in a flesh, willingly laid down his life to save you and I. He was put on a cross and there on the cross, my saviour died for you. He had nails driven through his hands and his feet. He had a crown of thorns smashed into his skull. He was spat on, he was beaten, he was mocked and everyone was there pointing at him saying, him, look at him, the son of God, if you are the son of God, bring yourself down from the cross. He endured the shame of the cross being punished, laughed at, so that you and I could be forgiven. But you know, the worst bit was, and I can't put it into words, but there was this sense of everything that we've done wrong, all of our lies, all of our sin, all of the times that we've said, OMG, all of the times we've been lustful and proud, all the violence of the world was at some point, it was pressured into one moment. It was laid, it was encased in Christ's body. And there he was tormented. There he was punished. He endured the wrath of God so that you and I can be let off can be forgiven and can be cleansed because the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away all of our sins. One drop would wash away the most vilest sinner. One drop, half a drop can make the most wicked person totally clean in God's eyes. Why? Because the Son of God's blood is so precious. And my dear friends, I've got to ask you right now, are you trusting in that sacrifice? Are you trusting in the Son of God, Jesus Christ alone? Or are you trusting in your own good works? Before Jesus Christ Christ breathed his last breath. He said these three words, it is finished. What did he mean by that? He was saying the price has been paid. I have given a sacrifice. The door is open and it's a wide door of God's mercy. And anyone who will humble themselves, anyone who will repent and leave behind their old ways and seek after the forgiveness of God, anyone who will walk through this wide door and enter in will find eternal life on the other side. So 
over to you again. Do you think that number two is the most dangerous sign that you might just be going to hell? Well, we're gonna find out in just a moment's time. The third sign that you might just be going to hell is that there is no fruit in your life. Jesus once rebuked the Pharisees and Sadducees, saying this, And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. One of the first sermons I ever wrote was entitled this, Jesus and his axe. You know, we often sing a song and it goes like this, Gentle Jesus, meek and mild. And I truly do believe that the Lord Jesus Christ really is a gentle, loving Saviour. But never forget this. He's also a man that you never ever want to mess with. There's a reason why the demons tremble when you say the name the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a reason why the devil is a defeated foe. There's a reason why the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who death could not hold him down. He conquered the grave because there is power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this might shock some of you, but Jesus Christ has an axe. And that axe is laid at the root of the tree of your life and Christ is waiting to see if you will bear fruit because the trees that don't bear fruit will be cut down and will be cast into the fire. Okay, Joe, I get exactly what you're trying to say. I just need to do more good works and then Jesus won't cut down my tree. Well, actually, no, that's the mistake that the Pharisees and the Sadducees made. They thought if they can put on an outward show, if they can manufacture their own good works, well, then they'll be acceptable to God. But God looked at the inside, inside of them. They were like whitewashed tombs. There was deadness and iniquity inside of them. What you and I need instead is for the Holy Spirit to do a work of regeneration where we bear fruit through him. You see, when a man or a woman puts their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and he dwells in these earthen vessels. That's an amazing truth that here is the God of the universe and he lives inside of us. And when he comes, he doesn't just leave us as we were. It is impossible to meet the living God, to have an encounter with the living God and to go through life unchanged. No, once the Holy Spirit is inside you, he convicts you of sin. He points you and he conforms you and takes off the rough edges to make you more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And over time, you will bear fruit because the Holy Spirit is doing a work of regeneration through you. Okay, the fruit might be small at times, the fruit might be unimpressive, but in the life of a true believer, there will always be fruit. Jesus Christ said, by their fruits, you shall know them. And you can tell that there is a believer in front of you because they will bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. They'll have a sensitivity to sin. They'll have a longing above everything else to know Jesus Christ, to be more closer to him. They'll have a desire to know more about the Word of God. They'll have more self-control than they used to have in their previous life. And oh my dear precious brother, my dear precious sister, how you and I need to be crying out to God daily saying, Lord God, help me to bear fruit. Let the Holy Spirit do a work through me, shape me, mold me. You are the potter and I am the clay. Do something through me because this is simply not a work that we can conjure up ourselves. We need him to work through us. So I'll ask you one more time. What do you think out of these three signs is the most dangerous sign that a person might be going to hell? Well, it's not number three, it's actually number two. In regards to number one and number three, I do want you to seriously, if these are in your life, I really do want you to pray seriously and seek the Lord's face that you might not be a Christian, but I do believe that some Christians will struggle with these things. But number two is not negotiable. If you are resting in your own good works, if you are resting in your own righteousness, you will not make it to heaven and you are heading to hell. For by grace you have been saved, through faith and not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It is only Jesus Christ who can save a drowning man. You can rest in your own swimming abilities, but eventually the torrents of the ocean will drag you down and they'll take you to hell. But my dear friends, there is a saviour who reaches out his hand and says, grab onto it, I'll save you. I'm a stronger swimmer than you are and I'm gonna take you to paradise, to heaven for all of eternity. Have you taken his hand? Have you trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ? But there's one big thing that I have not discussed in this video, and it's this. What is hell really like? Well, if you want the answer to that, please watch this video here. And if you haven't yet subscribed, and you find these videos helpful, please do consider subscribing. We'd love your friendship here at Off The Curb Ministries.